The capital P begins with a flat brush, making the vertical thick, starting with the left side to establish your letter width. Come back with a flat brush, overlapping 50%. Filling in that thick stroke with a little flare. And then flatten your brush out again. And including the serif, go ahead and make your uh, round on your P. By spinning clockwise coming around. Normally I can go all the way to the thick stroke with that. If not, then finish it off from the thick stroke, meeting it. And this is the time where you want to tune that, that uh, round up, making the serif a little bit longer here. Felt it needed to be. And this is the time to make that round nice and uniformed. And I have a little um, trick that I use in where in my mind I visualize th this uh, shape in two halves. So I look at the top and bottom half as solid. So I look at the top half as being this solid shape that I want to achieve and also the bottom one. That way I think of it as, in my mind, as one solid shape, but the two need to match. It helps me to create a more uniform shape this way. Then we go ahead and we complete the P with the serif below. Flatten out the brush. And round them off. Now I have to twist my brush on thick strokes because I can put the brush right on inside that thick stroke and then flatten it out again to create the thick on the round starting out horizontal and then just following with a uniform thick looking at the thick stroke on the left the, the, the vertical stroke. So I'm matching the two. A little bit of cleanup. The lowercase p begins with the thick stroke, just slightly above the upper line, and descending all the way down to the descending baseline. Flatten out your brush and we're going to make a little um, diagonal peak at the top of this thick stroke. So go ahead and kind of get that started with a slightly angled brush coming in 50% overlap and giving it a little bit of a flare at the top and the bottom. And you don't have to worry about it going all the way down to the end because uh, you're going to put a serif on the bottom of that. Flatten that brush out real flat because this is where you get to test your little flick ex experience and flick it to make that little point. And while the brush is flat enough, we're going to go ahead and make the serif on the bottom. Flatten out your brush. Round those off to complete that stroke. Horizontal brush. Now we're going to create that round. And to create that round, you want to um, start at the top and taper into the thick, but don't go too far into it. You want to be right on the edge so it just creates a nice smooth round at that point and a, and a nice gap of intersection between the round and the thick stroke. So with a slightly contracted brush, I'm going to start at the top and really hug that right side of that thick stroke. 
stay right on that edge. And then you're going to come from the top and go around the right side, spinning clockwise down to the bottom, making it a nice, nice little oval. Being mindful of letter width compared to uh, the other lowercase letters. Same thing with the uh, lower left. You're going to come in, taper in, and blend right in to your stroke. The idea is to <clears throat> make that look like it's rounded, not, not dying into it and squared off on that inside. And then for this uh, thick stroke, go ahead and get it real flat. Angle your brush to the same angle as the thin stroke. Push down, and I don't even have to spin the brush. It just automatically it flows right into the bottom without having to twist the brush. For the capital Q, it's the same steps as the capital O. You're just going to try to make a uh, uniform oval as you can with a semi-contracted brush. Just drawing an oval. Starting with the left side and then tapering right on through to make the right side. Looking at both the left and right side to create a uniform oval. This is the time to tweak it if you need to do one side or the other and make it thicker. If you're satisfied with that, flatten your brush out as much as possible. Start at the top, push down. As you go through halfway, start to lift up, spin the brush clockwise, taper right into the bottom. For the right side, you're going to flatten your brush as well, starting at the top, start to push down, push down harder, 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 and then start to lift up. No twisting of the brush here. The brush does all the work on that side. For the uh, tail of the cue, you're going to flatten your brush out as much as possible. And then you're going to start out with a vertical, almost vertical uh, direction of the brush. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring the brush down and begin with a thin stroke. But then quickly as you push down, you're going to make this thick swirling stroke and then taper off, lifting off at the end. Possible cleanup would be needed just to make it uniformed and then to make that small oval on the beginning of that stroke, you're going to make it, the brush flat, bring the left side of that oval around and then push in and over and down to make the right side of that oval and then fill it in. For the lowercase q, you want to start out making a lowercase a. That's just a contracted brush bringing around an oval egg-shaped thin line. Good time to adjust it if you need to on the edges. If not, pallet out your brush flat and start out the top. Start to push down, push, push, push harder. And then now you're going to start letting up and twisting clockwise. Flatten out your brush.
and this you're gonna you're gonna stay on the top baseline, not go above it on the cue, and then just go along the edge of that oval on the inside. Don't go past it. Keep that oval shape there. Fifty percent overlap. With a little flare, the top and the bottom. And you can come up short at the bottom because you're going to put a serif down there. Flatten out your brush again for the serif. Trying to make them the same length as the other lowercase serifs in the, in the phrase or word. Flatten out your brush again, round off, no twisting needed, and it's a thick stroke. On the uppercase R, if you can line up that bottom part of the leg on the axis with the middle of the round, you should be in good shape. Start out making a P, basically, with the thick stroke. percent overlap with a flat brush. A little taper at the top and bottom. Flatten out that brush again. By the way, I'm charging that brush with paint at the same time I'm flattening it. And then with the serif included, go ahead and make your round. Spinning clockwise. All the way to the vertical stroke. I'm evening it out. Looking at the top and the bottom to make it make them even and uniform. Flatten out your brush to make the thick stroke on the round, following the line of the thin stroke. Push down, no twisting needed on, on this side, on the right side, no twisting of the brush. Now here's where you want to start. Oh, I'm going to serif first. Flat brush. Rounding the two serifs, top, bottom, no twisting the brush, just because it's in a thick stroke. Now we're going to start on the right on the inside corner of the bottom of that round on the R with a flat brush. And I'm thinking about the left edge of my brush ending on the axis of the middle of that round. As I showed in that still chart in the beginning. And then you just finish off with the uniform thick stroke, slightly flared. And again, you don't have to go all the way down because you're going to serif the, this, this stroke. Flatten your brush out. Start on the inside edge. Make a half serif, flatten it out again, horizontally round off the serif. Here's what the first stroke looks like on its own with these lowercase letters. And then from there, go ahead and flatten out our brush and starting out the peak with an almost vertical, br vertical brush. We uh, bring, we touch down and bring down the stroke spinning counterclockwise. The idea of that is to try to make that intersection at that peak uh, thin. And you find out on this particular letter that 
I made it actually thicker than I wanted to. And I'm going to redo this R, but for now we'll go through the steps. And you want to make this thick stroke and square it off at the bottom. The other thing that I do on this R is that I, that I don't like, and the reason I redo it is this next stroke, the thin stroke, there needs to be a lot of uh, space in that intersection, in that, in that between the, this stroke, this thin stroke, and the first thick stroke. And I just didn't, I just didn't bring it down far enough. So it's much too bulky. And I'm glad I did it because it's showing um, the, uh, the, the difference between what this letter looks like when it's all thick and bulky like this, especially at that peak, and also at that intersecting stroke, a thin and thick stroke. And then you just pull up to make that little oval ending of the R, top part of the R. So we'll do it again. We'll start out with the uh, starting stroke, 45 with a slight curve to it. Flatten out your brush real thin. And I'm gonna go a little higher, just kind of tuck in there. See, so you, you gotta got kind of make a little hook there and then spin counterclockwise. And that's much better. It's not so thick there if you look at the two and then tuck your brush, flat brush in to make the thick stroke come out and down. And then square it off at the bottom. Now I'm gonna make this uh, thin stroke come down much lower towards the base of the R to, so that there's much more space. And it just, it just looks a lot better when you do it that way. It's, it's the way the letter, the alphabet should look. It's, it's, there's much more uh, space there. And, and, and then you just pull up to make that round at the top. 